Hi everybody, my name is Anthony and today I'm going to teach you step by step how to create your own official website and professional email without needing to know how to code. I've been helping friends and family create websites for years and I decided to start WebsiteMakingGuide.com to provide a free source for anyone who wants to launch their first website. A little background about me. I graduated from UC San Diego in computer science, a top 5 public university in computer science since the making of this video. I worked as a web developer and freelance as a web designer. So what you'll be learning today is what I also do for my clients. If you're still on the fence, let me explain the benefits of making your own website. Ownership of your online presence is the most important thing you can do right now. Our online identities are owned by companies like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and so forth. When people look you up, they can easily judge you from that content. Having your own website allows you to redirect people to a self-image you have complete control of. For portfolios and resumes, having a website distinguishes you from the competition it opens opportunities around the world, not limiting you to just LinkedIn. This provides more chances for employment and collaborating with others. Putting your business online or having an online business provides opportunities for creating passive income. And finally, blogging allows you to voice your opinion beyond social media. This allows you to connect to a larger community while harboring your content. Ultimately, a website is so easy and inexpensive to create that there is no excuse for not having one. We live in the best time. Nowadays, we don't need to know how to code to build a website. If you're wondering how we can go about this without coding, it's through the help of a powerful platform called WordPress. WordPress is a content management system, or in other words, a website building platform that is free and easy to use. It has a huge variety of themes to choose from and apps you can integrate into your website. If you can use Microsoft Word, you can build a website with WordPress. It's that easy. About 30% of websites online today are made from WordPress. There are other content management systems like Squarespace or Wix, but what continues to make WordPress the most popular is its scalability. You can create a powerful website that can grow with you. Notable companies and people such as The New York Times, Forbes, The Rolling Stones, Jay-Z, and TechCrunch all use WordPress. By the end of this video, we'll cover the following. Getting a domain URL. A domain URL or name is the web address for your website. WebsiteMakingGuide.com is the domain name for my website. Purchasing a domain name is more professional than having a domain name be a part of another. For example, if Google was connected to Wix, it would sound like google.wix.com. It doesn't sound or appear professional. This costs about 10 US dollars per year. Signing up for web hosting. In order for your website to go live, we need to store the files and information that make up your website in a server. These servers run 24 seven in a cold room so they don't overheat. This allows your website to be accessible at any given time of the day from anywhere in the world. This can cost about four to $8 a month, but is paid in yearly installments. So if you sign up for a $5 a month plan, you'd have to pay $60 up front for the year. Downloading WordPress, a walkthrough of the platform and must do configurations. And finally, I'll teach you how to get a professional email to go along with your website. This usually costs about $3 per month. Before you would have to pay and get each of these requirements separately. Then you'll need to have some technical knowledge in integrating it all together. But now, all you need to do is sign up for web hosting and everything else is included in your web hosting plan. Before we get started, I want to ensure all of you to not hesitate in asking any questions. Please feel free to leave your questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to reply. Now let's get started. The first thing we need to do is open up the supplemental guide by clicking the link below. This will bring us to websitemakingguide.com. I've already summed up the information on the front page earlier in this video. What we'll need to do is click on the quick startup tab at the top right. Here you'll be able to check if the domain name is available. If it returns who it is, it means that the domain name is taken. You can click to see who it belongs to if you're curious. What we want is for it to say bye. This means that the domain name is available for us to use. Next, click the button below to register your domain name and sign up for web hosting. The web hosting service I use for myself and my clients is Bluehost. They include a free domain name, an easy integration of WordPress, and a professional email. At the cost of one Starbucks drink a month, you can get everything you need for launching your website. I do not earn any commission from you signing up with Bluehost, but they do give me a small reward for recommending their services. I want to be transparent and honest to my viewers by making that clear. Ultimately, you should be using Bluehost because it's WordPress's number one recommended web hosting service. With its many benefits, it provides the ideal environment to work with WordPress. Click the Get Started Now to view the available plans. There are three plans you can sign up for. The basic plan is all you need but I highly recommend Prime because you have the flexibility to host unlimited numbers of websites. You also get domain privacy and backing up of your website at the same price of plus. Here's where we register for a free domain name. Put in the domain URL we checked earlier. On the next page, we'll be filling out our account information. 
Scrolling down to the second half of the page is where we go further in detail about our hosting plan. Understand that the duration you pick grandfathers you into that price. If I sign up for $5.95 per month, I lock in that price for three years, regardless if the price of Prime goes back to $14.99 a month or happens to increase during the time of my plan. I'll be choosing one year for this video, but choosing a longer term is a win-win because if you're committed to investing in yourself and what a website can bring, then a longer term saves you a lot more money. If you're on the basic or plus plan, some of these options won't say free and will be optional. Of any of the extra features, the only one I strongly recommend is domain privacy. Anybody can search up information on the owner of a domain. Domain privacy allows Bluehost to cover that information up by showing their information instead of yours. If you plan to have an online shop, check SiteLock Security. This demonstrates to your customers that your site is safe. I'm creating a blog, so I won't be needing it. Next, add the payment information. Agree to the terms and hit submit. Go ahead and ignore the advertisement by clicking no thanks. At this point, verify your email by checking your inbox, then come back and set up your password for your Bluehost account. Create a solid password, agree to the terms and services, and click next. Now let's log into Bluehost. It will take you to the Bluehost dashboard, and as it loads, it will suggest a theme for you to download. For now, we will scroll down a skip because I want you to get familiar with the working environment before dealing with the design of your website. It's done installing WordPress, but the blue banner informs us that there are configurations in progress. Let us go to our Bluehost account for the time being. If I try to log in right now, I would run into this error. Wait a few minutes for things to be ready, then refresh the page to see that the banner is gone. You can now log in to WordPress. We are now in WordPress and behind the scenes of your website. Go ahead and click I don't need help since I'll be walking you through the platform. Before we go over the WordPress platform, let's do a couple important configurations many people forget to do when starting WordPress. The first thing we're going to do is delete the default admin account because you can't rename the account. A lot of hackers know that and try to hack into your website. What we'll do is create a new account with admin rights. Click add new and fill in the following information. The most important thing is that we're replacing the default admin information with a new account. No need to click show password because the email will be sent to you about your login information. Make sure the send user notification box is checked and that the role is administrator. Your new account is created. Now log out of the admin account and check your email to verify that the new account was made. Then log back in with a new account. Once you've logged back in, go to the users tab and delete the admin account Select the attribute to all content to and select your new account. This will issue any content created by the deleted user to your new account. Next, go to the settings section and click permalinks. Click post name. This will make the links to your post easier to find and make it easier to read when sharing. Go ahead and click save. Now let's cover the fundamentals of WordPress. Here's where we create blog posts. I currently have two posts right now, but let's add a new one. As you can see, the format is similar to Microsoft Word. Here's a post telling people about a cool fly app called Hopper. Click preview to see how it looks on the default theme. I'll show you how to change the theme later in this video. The post currently is uncategorized. Let's go back and add a category to the post. On the right side, you can easily add a category of your liking. This will group the posts accordingly so that others can find it easily on your website. At the bottom, you can add a featured image. This image is what shows at the top of your post. When you're ready, click Publish to make your post viewable by the public. There you have it, your first post. Next, let's talk about pages. Pages are the different sections to your website. Let's look at the About page and add a bit of information to update it. Now that we've updated the About page, let's see how we can navigate through the pages on our website. You'll need to know how to use the Menu section. To access the Menu section, go to the Appearance on the left side and select Menus. Here's where you create the tabs or menu selections on your page. Let's select the top menu. On the right is the current menu structure. On the left is where we can select pages to add. 
I'm going to select the home page section and add it to the current menu. You can also add a subcategory. This will appear as a drop down when you hover over. Once you're done, be sure to save your changes. Now let's talk about the theme of your website. If you go to the appearance section, you can see what themes you currently have and which one is active. Click customize to begin making visual changes to your website. On the right side is how your website currently looks. On the left side is how you can make changes to your website. Each tab controls different sections to your website, which makes it easy to customize. For any changes that you make, make sure to press the save button on the top. To get a desktop view of your website, you can click hide controls on the bottom left. You will then be able to freely navigate through your website. To see the customization options again, just click the little arrow on the bottom left. Click the tablet and phone icons to view how they look on the respective devices. If you want to edit a section directly, you can click the blue pencils next to it. The default theme is pretty good, but let's look into how to install new themes. In the appearance section, we can easily add a new theme by clicking the big plus sign. This will bring us to where we can search for themes. By clicking the feature filter, we can narrow down the available themes to our liking. My website will be a blog, so I'll check the blog box and apply the filter. Browse through and find one that you like, but make sure to preview it. Be sure to collapse the left side so that you aren't missing out on the full view. If you'd like, some themes have a link to a full demo. This can give a better perspective on how a theme can look when you have more content. For now, don't spend too much time on choosing a theme. Just pick one and move on. You can easily change your theme anytime. What's more important is creating content. Once you've chosen a theme, click Install and then click Activate. This will make it your current theme. Now let's talk about plugins. They're very powerful. Plugins are apps or features you can add to your website to help you. There are some plugins already installed and active. Let's add a couple more to get your website ready. The first plugin we'll add is a contact form. Search for contact and check the details of the first result. It's good to check the details because some plugins have requirements. In this case, there isn't any. This plugin has good reviews and has over a million downloads, so I'm convinced to try it out. Let's click install now and then click activate. Head to the plugins page to check out the settings. In the settings, you'll find that there's a short code. This short code allows WordPress to integrate the plugin into a page of your website. Go ahead and copy the short code. Let's go to our contact page and replace the default text with the short code. This will install the contact form. The contact form will allow people to send a message directly to your email. Click preview to see how your contact form looks. Next, let's install one more plugin. Search up the word smush. This plugin will compress the images you upload to WordPress and make your website load faster. It's important to install this early on. Install the first result and activate it. With Smush, you can compress existing photos or you can select Automatic Smush. This will compress images automatically when you upload them. Select it and click Update. Now let's finally set up a professional email to go along with your website. What we need to do is log into Bluehost and go to the Email section. Fill in the information to add an email account. Select Unlimited for your mailbox quota and click Create. Scroll down to click Set up Mail Client for your email account. We're setting up the email manually, so we'll be using the information provided in the blue box below. On a separate window, log into a Gmail account that you would like to use for sending and receiving your professional emails, or create a new one specifically for your website. Click the gear icon on the top right of your email account. Click Settings. Now go to the Account and Imports tab. If you can, create a split screen so you can view both information easily. Click Add a Mail Account. Fill in the email address with the one you created with Bluehost. Make sure that the import emails from my other account is selected and click Next. For the username, it's the same as the email address. The POP server is the incoming server information provided by Bluehost. The port will be the POP3 port of the incoming server. 
check the three following boxes in Add Account. You are now able to receive emails. Next, we'll set up the ability to send out emails. Check that the information is correct before going forward. Replace the SMT server information with the outgoing server name from Bluehost and select the corresponding port number. The username is your professional email address. Fill out the matching password information and make sure that the SSL option is selected. Click Add Account. It may take a few minutes, but go ahead and check your inbox for a confirmation email. You can click the link or copy the code to enter. I'll copy the code since I have the tab open. There you have it. You'll be able to send and receive emails in your Gmail account as your professional email address. Finally, let me show you a shortcut to logging into your WordPress account. What you can do is type the domain URL of your website, add a forward slash, and type wp-admin. This will bring you to the login page for your website. Make sure to bookmark this address. If you found this video helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment below. I'll do my best to reply. Subscribe for more videos like this, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Thanks again for watching.